Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, so grateful to be able to be uh, here with you all. Um, and just uh, in case you didn't notice, uh, this class is actually Christian meditation. So uh, we're actually uh, practicing, learning about practicing meditation uh, today. And we have the wonderful opportunity of being able to have with us uh, Dr. Tracy Jones. And I just wanted to share a few pieces of information about uh, Tracy. Uh, Tracy has been a disciple since 1996. She's a health, a mental health counselor. Uh, she's been a mental health counselor since 1997 and has her doctoral degree in uh, from uh, Liberty University. Her research areas include the use of Christian meditation as clinical intervention, she has provided mental health workshops for churches, presented at conferences, published research, worked as a clinician, clinical director, as well as an adjunct pro professor. She is a member of the executive leadership team at Cross Point Clinical Services in Massachusetts. Tracy is currently enrolled in a program to become a certified spiritual director and helps to direct Sabbath and spiritual practices retreats. Tracy is married to her best friend, Tyrone, and has four children, ages 11 to 25. So excited about today's class uh, and time that we have together. I'm going to open us up with a word of prayer and then turn it over to Tracy. Dear God, Heavenly Father, so grateful for this time that we have to really reflect mm -hmm. and to grow um, more into the likeness of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So grateful for all the many ways in which you are shaping and molding us uh, now and will continue to do in 2023. Mm -hmm. Grateful to be able to learn about the spiritual practice of meditation. We pray, God, that you would really continue to use this time to really transform and change us more into the likeness of Christ. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for each and every individual here and their sacrifice to taking the time to draw near and draw closer to you. Mm. Pray and ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for being here. This is such an exciting day and it's just been so warming for my heart to see so many people interested and in just wanting to get closer to God and wanting to deepen and, and enrich uh, the way we move with God. Um, so I want to start with a question. Have you been noticing a rumbling in your heart have you been noticing a desire for this deeper connection, just really wanting something more than what you've been experiencing in your walk with Christ, um, and just wanting to know, how do I get deeper? How do I get closer to the God who formed me, to the God who called me out of this broken world? How do I get closer to him than ever before? I've been a disciple for this year will be 27 years, and uh, I feel a lot like the Carrillos that I feel closer to God now than ever. Um, and each to each time things get closer, I think, oh, I didn't think it could get closer. And here we are getting closer. And uh, it's such a great uh, experience uh, to just learn how to walk with him. And there's many missteps along the way, and that's okay. We fall down and and God is the loving father that pulls us back up and says, let me carry you. Let's get you back on solid ground. And we all need that sometimes. And so we're going to spend this time, you know, it's really just a, a taste. We're going to get just a little taste of what Christian meditation is. Some of you may be very familiar and may have been practicing for decades. Um, and other people may have never done this at all. And so I'm going to try to speak to that spectrum. Um, but just to give... Uh, an introduction. This really is just meant to be an hors d'oeuvre, okay? Um, there's much, much more to the meal, and I hope that you will pursue that after this class. Um, but Christian meditation, meditation itself is a discipline. It's one of the spiritual disciplines. Um, it's a practice. So it takes practice in order for us to get good at it. It takes practice in order for us to learn more and more how to move in this way. I kind of think of all of the spiritual disciplines as movements with God, just ways that we move with him, ways that we can be with him. There's nothing magical about any of the spiritual disciplines. They are all just a cord that connect you to the source, but they aren't the source themselves. They just connect us to God. And so meditation is just one of many ways that we can connect to God. But I kind of think about it like when I go to the gym, 
I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience, but I'll go and I'll work out and I'll really try hard. I'll put my whole heart into it for an hour. And, you know, then I'll come out and I look in the mirror and where are my, my cut abs? Where'd they go? <laughs> How come I could work that hard? And I'm not just, you know, in the most amazing fit shape that I've ever been in. Cause I really did put in a hard workout for that whole hour. Right. And Christian meditation is a little bit like that. We have to trust that in the long run, this is going to produce amazing results in our connection to God. But it doesn't necessarily mean that in this one moment, I, I, my whole life gets transformed because of this 10 minutes. Um, it's the accumulation over time of consistently connecting to God in this way that you start to notice real change. And it's sustainable change. That's what going to the gym on a regular and consistent basis does, so I hear, is that we get to experience consistent growth and consistent health and we get stronger. And that's what meditation does for us as well. So I just wanted to start out with a realistic view of what meditation is. It's just a cord connecting us to the source. It's going to take practice. It's going to feel awkward at first, kind of like when you first go to the gym and you start using that rowing machine and you're like, am I going up? Am I going down? What's happening? You know, um, it, it's going to feel that way sometimes. It's going to feel like it's hard to get my brain to stay focused in this moment. And that's okay to not get discouraged with that. Just keep persisting. And I think you'll find six months down the road, a year down the road, you'll go, huh, wow, this is really different than it was when I first started. It feels more comfortable, feels more natural now, um, but it won't to begin with. And that's okay. So let's talk about meditation. So meditation is in the Bible. Meditation is actually commanded in the Bible um, that we would meditate. It's, it's commonly noted in the Bible. It uh, starts in Genesis, actually, where Isaiah went out and he, I mean, not Isaiah, uh, he, he, we went out and he was just in the evening. He was practicing meditation. He was meditating and then along comes his wife, you know, and, um, and so meditation was kind of a, an expected part of life. And I just want us to kind of think about that because I think sometimes we think of meditation, we might think of what we see on a magazine in the grocery store or something like that. And to not worry about that meditation, you can meditate every day of your life and never step outside the Bible. Okay. Meditation can be completely based in the Bible and based in your relationship with God. You do not have to step outside your relationship with God or the Bible in order to meditate. So let's just start with that, okay? Because I know sometimes people fear that. So let's just get rid of that fear right now. And let's look in Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. So meditation is a way to connect, to move with God. And through meditation, as you can see in this scripture, it's a way to get us uh, to a deeper, more personal a way of walking with God. It's a way of connecting to that blessed life that he has prepared for us. It's connecting with God in deeper ways that allow you to will and act in in order to fulfill his good purpose. It's a way for us to understand God's good purpose and to be connected to it. You'll see if you do just a, a study of meditation in the Bible, one of the things that you're going to notice is that oftentimes after somebody has meditated, they know how to step forward with God. And so they might move in a new direction. It gives them discernment. It helps them figure out what's the next step God wants me to do. Because in meditation, your mind is focused on God. You're focused on his character, his deeds, and his word. You're not so much focused on your problems. Oftentimes, we do meditate on our problems, right? We repeat them over and over and over and over again in our mind. So wouldn't it be cool if we could meditate on God's word and on God's promises instead? Meditation uh, according to Donald Whitney, who wrote this really great book, I would highly recommend called Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life. And one of the things he said really stood out to me is that meditation is the missing link between Bible intake and prayer. 
too often disjointed, these two things should be united. Typically, we read the Bible, we close it, and then we try to shift gears into prayer. But in our brain, what's happening is that we're reading the Bible, which is often a very cognitive exercise. We're trying to understand it. We're trying to understand the context. We're really trying to, you know, you engage our minds to be able to understand what's what's happening in this scripture and how to connect to God through these words. And then we close it and we want to shift into what is a much, oftentimes a much more emotional part of our relationship with God, which is prayer. How do I pour my heart out to God? And one of the cool things is that meditation can be this bridge that connects those two things. Like if we took a piece of what we studied in our Bible study and we meditated on that, it would allow our heart and our mind to connect to it in a different way. And then when we switched over to prayer, we're connected. We're already emotionally connected to God. We're already connected to his word, his character, and who he is. And so when we shift over into prayer we might experience a very different kind of prayer at that point. I've done experiments on this. <laughs> I did experiments with my own kids, you know, where I just said, let's do a meditation first before we do our prayer tonight. And it's so interesting how much more of their heart they gave to God. They didn't just kind of go through their little checklist of what happened in the day and what they're grateful for and thanks for mom and dad and hope school's good tomorrow kind of thing. Instead, they really connected to who God was. You know, who is his, what, who's his character and who is he in their life? How do they see him? How's he showing up? How are they showing up for God? And it's very interesting to kind of watch that happen. I would encourage you to see what happens to you when you give this a try. So how often and how long should I meditate? This is just a little quote. It's not in the Bible, but you should sit in meditation for 20 minutes a day. Unless you're too busy, then you should sit for an hour. <laughs> and I love this because it's so true. The busier we are, actually, the more we need this, the more we need to learn to stop and connect to God. And completely tangent, um, but a great book recommendation that I wanted to throw in here is the book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. That book is a life-changing book in the sense that it really helps you see how hurried of a life you live and how unlike Jesus that is, you know, and how we need to learn how to live life to the full, but to not be rushing through it, but to learn how to slow down. Meditation is a great way to really practice that, to train your brain, your mind, and your body to just slow down. How do I connect to the life that God has given me? So what are some of the things we need to do in order to meditate? First thing we need to do is we need to clear the world out of our heart and mind. We need to learn how to be intentional, directing our focus onto God. When I think about this, I think of Luke 11, 24 through 26. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds a house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is actually worse than it was in the first, right? And so it's really important that when we think about meditation, we think about clearing out the world, clearing out the mind, kind of clearing out what's happening in my day, what's going on, kind of making space for this, but that we also fill it up with the right stuff, that we don't just leave it empty. And meditation is not about emptying your mind. Meditation is about emptying your mind so that you can fill it with the right stuff, okay? And so it's really important to understand that, that meditation is just a way that we can Take time to empty out what's going on and then fill up, be intentional with what we fill up with that space and not leave it empty. So the goal of Christian meditation is actually attachment. The goal is not to just detach from the world around us. The goal is actually attachment. It's attachment to God, filling of the mind with the word and character or truths of God. In order to achieve this, though, we first need to disengage from those attachments in the world and then be intentional about putting in the right stuff. So what's the right stuff, <laughs> right? That's a good question. What's the right stuff? 
Philippians 4, 8 gives us a clue. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about or meditate on (laughs) such things. And so the Bible kind of gives us a clue. What are we supposed to be focusing on? We are supposed to be focusing on these things that are solid, things that are steadfast, things that you know, you think about what all of these words are, whatever noble, whatever's right, pure, lovely, admirable, you know, they're not life's a bowl full of cherries kind of things. They're things we have to search out. We have to find the things that are noble. We have to find the things that are right and pure. And we have, those are solid things, things that we can stand on. So what does meditation do for us? It's actually a vehicle for transformation. It increases our understanding. It helps us to heal. It helps us to gain insight. Uh, When we contemplate and ponder and apply God's word, it actually moves God's word from this place in our brain to this place in our heart, which is a really important transformation, really important movement. Because if you think about it, there are lots of things that you know in your mind and you even have studied them or you know something about them, but they're not things that you're going to live out, right? Because they're even... Uh, hopefully there's even things we know that we know not to live out (laughs) those things that we're purposely not living them out, right? So just knowing something in our mind doesn't make it something that we live. And meditation is a, is a tool to help that, that truth of God and his character and who he is to take it from that place in our mind, something that we know and put it into our heart, something that we can actually live from, right? And when we do that, it helps us to love God with all of our heart, mind, and strength, right? So we're not just cognitively understanding God, but we're learning to live from a place of loving God. And as the Carrillo said earlier, Romans 12 too, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. If you're meditating on God's word, if you're transferring it from this amazing brain of ours to our heart, you are learning how to let that renew who you are. Renew how you think, how you respond, how you live, how you how you look at people, uh, because you're allowing the word to transform what's happening inside of you. And meditation facilitates this. So there are actually three words in the Bible for meditation, two in Hebrew and one in Greek. And what does it mean? So these different words for meditation Uh, And I think one of the reasons uh, that their meditation is found in the Bible is that it was actually part of the culture around them, too. It's part of Hebrew culture to meditate. It's part of the Greek culture to meditate. As a matter of fact, most cultures, you will find some form of meditation is involved in that. So what does meditate? So meditate itself is not necessarily a religious term. Um, But what does it mean? It means to mutter, to ponder, to chew on the word. Um, and to really kind of, I, I think about it like I grew up on a dairy farm. So I think about it like the cows chewing on their cud, like they chew and chew and chew and chew and chew, right? And that's kind of what God wants us to do with his word. He wants us to really chew and chew and chew on it and really let ourselves slowly digest what this word means and how do we apply it to our lives. So we're meant to dwell on scripture, not just kind of how many pages could I read today, but Sometimes, you know, one of my very first disciples, she, I said to her, how often, how long should I spend in my quiet time each day? And she said, you know, when you do a quiet time, it's kind of like panning for gold. You just kind of pan until you find your nugget. And so sometimes you might read just a couple of lines of scripture and other times you might need to read whole books, <laughs> you know, till you find that nugget that God wants you to park on for that day. And I think meditation is a way to do that, to find that nugget and to park on it. How do I dwell on this scripture? How do I ponder it? How do I contemplate it? How do I picture it and take time to do that? Not just kind of read as much as I can, but how do I take time to let it sit with me so that I can store it in my heart? So I can claim God's promises and I can claim who God's character is. You see David do that over and over and over again. God, this is who you are, right? Because he meditated on who God is. And so he was able to talk to God about that. I know this is who you are. So I know that there's something else going on here than what I can see. So what are the things the Bible tells us to meditate on? So it tells us to meditate on God's promises, his mighty deeds, 
his law, his unfailing love, his decrees and statutes, his precepts and ways, his wonderful works. How about meditating on Jesus, his character? How did he do it? How did he walk around with these guys? How did he do the things that he did, right? Meditate on who he is. Meditate on what he's done. Just taking time to meditate on what is there in the Bible. Not just know it cognitively, but allow yourself to invite it along to walk with you throughout your day, right? So how do we meditate? So there's a few different ways that people can meditate. So in the Jewish tradition, meditation involves speaking the scripture over and over and over. And in the Greek tradition, it involves contemplating on the scripture. Uh, both of these ways of meditating, they require, first of all, that we make space, space that we can be filled up with God's word, right? So if we're so busy and we're running around, it's really hard to have that space to put in God's word. I always think of it like if you want to add more to a cup and the cup is already full, whatever you're adding is not is spilling over. It's not staying in your cup. <laughs> so sometimes it's really important to just clear out some space, okay? So empty out some of what's in that cup so that you can fill it up with God's word. And I love this scripture in Luke 5, 16. Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. If you go ahead and read that chapter, what you're going to find is that this scripture does not come when Jesus is having, you know, eh, he's just kind of hanging out that day. And it was, you know, just a kind of lull of a day. He was a little bit bored. So he withdrew to lonely places and prayed. This is a good time and no one's around me. So it's a good time for me to do this. No, it's in the middle of he was healing this one and crowds were around him and all this stuff's happening. And then it says, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. And then it comes back and it tells you more things that he did, right? So this is kind of in the middle of his busy life. Life, that he often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Because when you're too busy to pray for 20 minutes, then it's a good day to pray for an hour. When you're too busy to meditate for 20 minutes, it's a good day to meditate for an hour, right? And Jesus practiced that. And I always go back to this scripture in my mind when my life gets full and I think, oh, I don't have enough time to do this. I always think if Jesus needed to often withdraw and get time alone with God, I am all the more going to need that. I am all the more going to need to take time away from the busyness of life and just be alone with God. Meditation is a great way to be able to do that. So let's talk about some practicals. First, find a quiet space. Find a space where you can be free from distractions. You can be alone and you can have that space to meditate. The cool thing is there's no particular posture or place you need to be to meditate. It just find a place that works for you. It can be in your car. You know, in my town, we have a beautiful lake right down the street. I can just go sit in my car at the lake. If the, if the weather is bad, I can, if the weather's nice. I can walk and sit by the lake or I can walk around the lake. And so you can be out in nature. You can be uh, going for a walk in your neighborhood. You can be in a corner of your house. You can be in a closet. <laughs> You can be wherever you need to be to just know that you can be alone. You can be free from distractions. Put down the phone, put down the screens, and just let yourself be alone with God. Make that space. And I always think if you make space for God, he's going to fill it up. He's not going to let it be empty space. He's going to go back to that scripture of clear out the space and clear the, the demons out and then fill it up with the right stuff. And he says, I'm the right stuff. If you fill it up with me, we're going to be okay. And so make that space. God will meet you there. He will fill it up. So we're going to take a moment right now because I think um, any spiritual practice, if you're wanting to learn it, you have to practice it, right? And so we're just going to spend a few minutes right now just giving this a try. Let's try it out. Let's try uh, doing a scriptural meditation. I'm going to guide you through it. Uh, so if you've done this before, it will feel familiar. If you've never done it before, don't worry at all because we're, I'll guide you right through it. Uh, so one of the things that's helpful for getting rid of distractions is if it's possible where you are to close your eyes, uh, to sit comfortably. You don't have to sit in any certain position or anything like that, but just sit comfortably just so that your body's not distracting you. Um, and then if you can close your eyes, because the visual field is very, very distracting. So try just closing your eyes, allowing yourself that internal space uh, where you can be alone with God right now. And then you're just going to do what I'm going to guide you through, okay? So in this scriptural truth meditation, 
you're going to practice just slowing down, quietly reflecting on a significant truth from Scripture. I've chosen a scripture for us today, Isaiah 26, verse 3. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Today, we're going to use this scripture and we're just going to take a moment. Just going to take a moment to be with God with this scripture. So just do a little check. Make sure you're sitting comfortably. Say a short prayer to yourself, just asking for guidance for the next few minutes as we complete this meditation. Just allow your body and your mind to be still. And if you haven't already, try closing your eyes if it's possible. And purposefully shift your focus from earthly mindedness to heavenly mindedness. Letting go of rumination. Letting go of worry. And pivoting toward a single point of focus. The short passage of scripture that we've chosen. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Take a deep breath in and breathe out, repeating the scriptural phrase with focused, sustained attention. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. If you need to, you can always do half the scripture in one breath and half in a second. Just repeat this breathing in, breathing out the scripture. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Just repeat the scripture slowly and intentionally several times. Your mind will inevitably wander to something other than the verse you have selected. When this happens, gently exercise a spirit of grace toward yourself by non-judgmentally refocusing your attention back on the biblical passage. Breathing in and out the scripture. Quietly reflect on the passage. Notice any feelings that arise with this biblical topic or with any of the words in the scripture. Ponder its meaning and how its message is expressed in your life as you move from your brain to your heart. Breathing in 
and breathing out, saying the scripture a few more times. Again, if your mind starts to wander, remember this is normal. Simply return to the scripture phrase and deeply experience the feeling that corresponds with the biblical topic and with this passage. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Just allow the scripture to sit with you. Notice if any words stand out in particular and focus on those. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. As you conclude the meditation, make a commitment to act on what you've just focused all of your attention on in a Christ-like manner. Say a short prayer to God, thanking him for revealing himself to you through his word, knowing it is always available to you. You can return to it at any point throughout your day by breathing in and saying the scripture as you breathe out. When you are ready, you can open your eyes, bring your awareness back to the room and to your surroundings. If you're with someone and they've fallen asleep, tap them back awake. So just take a moment and just think about what was this experience like for you? Was it what you expected? Was it different? I would encourage you to start by your meditation practice by just adding a short meditation to your quiet time. taking a piece out of what you read in your Bible passage for the day. And just go ahead and do what we just said. Just focus on that one piece of the scripture. Just allow yourself to sit with it. I usually encourage people to do meditation in the morning. That way you can return to it all throughout your day. How many times have we read the Bible in the morning and by 11 o'clock, we can't even remember (laughs) what it is we've read because we've done so many other things in the meantime, right? And the cool thing about connecting this to our breath is that we're breathing all day long. (laughs) It's something God has given us. We don't even have to do anything to make it happen. We're breathing all day long. So if we could just harness a few of those to connect them to scripture, that'll help you. It'll help you to just kind of have an easy way to practice your meditation throughout the day. Now, meditation is a cool thing that can be used to help calm us. You know, we can use scripture to calm us down when we're having a hard time. We can use it as a way just to say, hey, God, I love you. I'm just trying to connect to you today. Uh, We can use it in lots of different ways. But if we're going to use scripture, we're going to use meditation to kind of help us get to a place where we're more calm, which 
meditation has been shown to decrease depression, decrease anxiety, decrease a person's sense of shame. Like all of those things is pretty amazing, actually, uh, how it works on the body. Uh, I even had a client one time, it, she had high blood pressure when we started and she didn't take any medications or anything. Nothing changed in her medical presentation, but her blood pressure went down to the point where her doctor was saying, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I can't believe it. And the only thing she did different is we added in biblical meditation into her daily routine. And it really started changing even just how her body was reacting to the world. And I think that's a really interesting and a cool thing that God, God connects us. God says everything about you is all connected. You're not all these little boxes, <laughs> but you're completely integrated. You're completely connected. And when we start allowing God into that space, it changes everything about us. Um, but I would say that if you're expecting meditation to kind of help alleviate your anxiety and help you calm down and whatnot, it takes practice. You're going to have to practice it on a regular basis uh, to help calm down what's happening. And I always think we don't practice for a fire. We don't do fire drills when there is a fire, right? We do fire drills when there's no fire so that when there is a fire, we know exactly what to do. So if you're practicing meditation on a daily basis, then when something stressful does come up, you know exactly where to go. Your body knows where to go. Your body knows how to breathe. Your body knows how to allow scripture in. Your body knows how to do all of those things. And so practice as much as you can so that that it's right there and it's available to you. And I have definitely experienced that in my own life as, you know, when I first started meditating, I was actually a teenager when I got exposed to meditation. And I am one of those people that's like, go, 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 do, 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 do. That is definitely my character. And when I learned to meditate as a teenager, I was just amazed. I thought, I love this feeling. <laughs> I would have never tried this on my own. This is amazing. And now, you know, decades later of practicing meditation, it's so much easier for my my whole body. I sit in a certain place in my house where I do meditation and my whole body just goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. This is where we are. Um, because if you practice, your body starts to respond to that, right? You, you build up that habit in yourself. Um, and the other thing I just want to encourage you guys, try using the same scripture for several days in a row. Uh, try using it for a week. Try even using it for a month. You'll be amazed at how the different things you see in the scripture, the different ways that you connect it to yourself, the ways you connect it to your life when you start doing it day after day after day. Um, and I've always been amazed by that, that I'll start, you know, the week with one scripture. And by the time I've been doing it for several days, I think, oh, I didn't even see that in the scripture when I first read it. And I've read the Bible many times and I didn't even notice that. But now that I've let it sit with me for a while, I've invited this scripture in and sat it down next to me and I've let it carry, you know, carried it with me throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month. I see very different things in it now. Um, and I have a different way to connect to God because of that scripture. And I see why that scripture is meant to be a cord to connect me to the source. Um, so try that. See what it does. You know, it's all just what works for you, but just see what it does. So just wanted to give you guys something. Um, I have the most boring YouTube channel in the world. Um, <laughs> the only thing on it is meditations. <laughs> um, but it's an easy way to be able to give it all to you guys. Um, and so you can scan this code or you can just look up the YouTube channel, Tracy Jones EDD, and both will get you to that. And uh, also, I wanted to put in there my email address. So if anybody has any questions or they um, any, want any further guidance, I'm definitely here, want to help, and um, I'm available. So Class ends in five minutes. So we have five minutes, everybody, <laughs> before the end of class. And if anybody has any questions in the next couple of minutes, I am happy to answer anything that I can. Thank you so much, Tracy. Really, really appreciate everything you've shared and the resources that you've provided. Just wanted to, in regards to questions, just wanted to ask if uh, if you could, if you are interested in getting your questions answered, please put them in the chat. That way we can uh, we can look at the questions and then uh, funnel them uh, funnel them up uh, to Tracy to uh, to answer. So, um, with that. Questions. Okay. 
Looks like there's a question here. It says, can you talk about your personal meditative practice? Sure. So I do a um, uh, sort of a Lectio Divina style meditation, usually in the morning. Um, and one of the other classes here today is on Lectio Divina. So I would definitely encourage you guys to check that out if you're interested in that. But it's a way to just kind of take a word or uh, a very small phrase and just really let yourself contemplate that, let yourself meditate on that. Um, and it can be long or short. Um depending on how much time you have. And I like to do that, uh, kind of start my day, just get myself connected. Just, okay, God, what's your spirit going to tell me today? Um, and I love that meditation is a way to remind me that God has given me his spirit, <laughs> that I don't have to figure out any of these things on my own, that it's his spirit that can guide me. And so uh, meditation really for me is a way to connect to that, to remind myself of that and to really just watch the spirit work. I have I tell you most days I am amazed at what comes out of that little meditation first thing in the morning. Um, and then I have bigger meditation practices that I do too, like contemplative meditation practices where you really just kind of spend time contemplating on um, a, a longer passage or you spend time just contemplating on the word or part of who God is, like just contemplating. The other day I spent some time just contemplating and meditating on loving kindness. And what does that mean that God has loving kindness? And what does it mean for my life? And what does it mean if I could learn to be a person of loving kindness? What would that look like in the lives of the people around me? And just kind of taking that time to meditate on those things. So I feel like daily is a great way to even if you can only do five minutes a day to do five minutes a day for now and then you can always increase it as you move forward but get start with a pace and a rhythm that feels like you could sustain that for right now um, so that you can add to it think about it like you're building a foundation and then you're going to build on that foundation okay so if i go to the gym i'm not going to the gym for three hours and expecting myself that i'm going to be able to do that every day right but if i can go to the gym for 20 minutes then that's great i just start that there and i can always build from there but if i try to do too much too fast then i'm not going to sustain it so whatever you can do if five minutes is a great place to start to be honest and then move it to 10 and then move it to 15. Can you meditate with a group on a scripture? Yes, you absolutely can do that. Sorry, I see that's the only thing I can see in the chat right now. <laughs> and absolutely, you can. Um, we just did it. We just did it. And actually, the meditation we just did was a mixture of Greek and Hebrew meditation. We repeated the scripture over and over, and we spent time contemplating on it. So it was a mixture of that. Music and meditation, absolutely. You can use music when you meditate as long as it doesn't distract you. So you want it to enhance what you're doing, not to distract from what you're doing. So sometimes I listen to um, Joshua Aaron is a Hebrew Christian uh, song writer and performer and whatnot. And one of the things I like is this, if I listen to his songs in Hebrew, I actually don't know what the words are. <laughs> So I can listen to the music without um, it interrupting or distracting me. That was fantastic. Uh, thank you so much again, Tracy. Really, really enjoyed the resources and everything that you've shared. Um, I don't know if we have uh, time for uh, one more question. Uh, okay. Yeah, it says uh, here, do you find meditation straight after study is the most effective way? Um, I guess uh, it is a very effective way. There's other ways, too. And so I think just the thing is, enjoy it, experiment with it, try different things, see what works for you. This is your relationship with God. This is not um, a checklist. OK, so God just wants you to walk with him. And this is one of the ways that we can walk with him. So find Find how you can do this. Find how you can walk with them. And I know this was just a taste today, and I'm sorry all we can give you is a taste, but there's so many more resources out there. So go and try it. Just try it. 